Kabane Kusaka is a 13-year-old boy who is emotionally blind. He doesn't know how to process or express any emotions, making him look like a robot. His childhood has been anything but easy. His parents abandoned him to his aunt's care, who makes him do field work and forbids him from attending school. To top it off, his cousin Yataro and other villagers also frequently humiliated him because of his strange odor. One day, his aunt invites the occult detective Kohachi and Yugami to stay at her villa and Kabane brings his breakfast to the detective's room. He then reveals that he is aware that El Nugami came to investigate his aunt's livestock which strangely rots away at every new moon. And he is the one in charge of burying the corpses, giving Inugami the clue that the culprit should show up in five days. For many days, Inugami accompanied Kabane on his fieldwork, completely unfazed by his repugnant smell. But then, Inugami tells Kabane the secret of his necklace. It's a precious stone called a life stone, a sign that Kabane's parents cared for him and didn't abandon him. The realization of this changed everything for Kabe and it spurred him on to accept Inugami's offer of help to find his parents. On the new moon day, Kabe eagerly waited for Inugami's arrival, only to be confronted by his cousin, who was envious of his closeness with Inugami. In a fit of bitter jealousy, Yatero snatched the life stone away, prompting Kabe, who in a fit of rage, transformed into a monstrous figure. Yatero ran from the scene in fear, abandoning the life stone and Kabe who, upon regaining possession of the stone, returned to his normal self. Upon Inugami's arrival, Kabane is surprised to learn he is a kimono, a magical being who has mystical capabilities and is also half-human and half-ghoul. He assures Kabane that his life stone keeps him in control. The two manage to rescue Yatero in the nick of time as Inugami shoots and decapitates a murderous dog ghoul and Kabane chops off the head of another with an axe. Suddenly a monstrous deer appears and Inugami shoots, but it keeps on regenerating. That is until Kabane steps forward and, with a mighty grip, rips its head off and kills it. While bringing Itero back home, Inugami opens fire on Kabane after revealing that his aunt was aware of his identity, and ordered his death. Much to their surprise, Kabane arose, alive and well. He gets to know that he is an immortal demon. He has the power to regenerate and can now have a fresh start since his aunt thinks he is dead. Inugami takes Kabane to his office in Tokyo, where he meets two other members of his agency, Spider Kimono Shiki and Snow Kimono Akira. Inugami asked Kabane if he would like to join the Kimono Detective Agency, and gave him time to consider it. The group went to the old house to investigate the situation and discovered that a mother and child were trapped in a room. Inugami quickly informed them that the area was infested with Sanchi bugs. He told everyone they needed to obtain an item that these bugs prized, and return it to their nest, to release the captives. Kabin then offered his help after a failed rescue attempt. He enters the room, and the Sanchi bugs were ready to devour and paralyze him, but since he was an immortal demon, none of this affected him. Kabane then removed the bug's favorite item from the room, a pair of shoes. The group soon learns that the shoes were stolen by a young boy's brother, in order to give them to their mother as a gift. Even after the boy revealed this, his regret still lingered in the air. Kabane was stirred by the bond of family, and with determination, he asked Inugami to help him find his own. The next day, the trio visited Yoko and Ari, the head of the Metropolitan Police Station. But blonde girl Khan only took Kabane to the meeting room. Inari introduced herself with an emotional story and explained that a kimono feeds on human emotions. But she no longer needs to rely on humans due to the power of her life stone, which prevents kimono's bloodthirst and no longer requires them to rely on humans. Khan unexpectedly chopped off Kashane's head and placed it in a briefcase to prevent it from regenerating. In a race against time, Kabane's friends launch a daring attempt to rescue him. In a heart-pounding moment, Shiki hesitates before taking a leap of faith and throwing Kabane's head to land on Khan's shoulder. In one swift rage-filled attack, Kabane manages to bite off her arm and injure her. After the fight, Kabane regenerated his body and the group reported back to Inugami. The next day, Kanabe and Akira follow Inugami's orders to search a tunnel to put an end to the construction workers' deaths caused by the frog kimonos. As they walked in the tunnel, Akira reveals to Kanabe his heartbreaking story of being separated from his twin brother while running away from a snowy village where male births only occur once in a hundred years. With his newfound determination, Akira confides in Kane that he seeks to become brave like him and his brother. Suddenly, Akira was interrupted and attacked by a frog kimono. But before he got the chance, Kane had sprung into action and saved Akira by striking the frog with a metallic pipe. They then poured a bottle of blood into the river, as instructed by Inugami. 
And, just like that, several frogs appeared. Akira was scared and ducked into a corner, but Kane was ready to fight. He punched and ripped the frogs with his bare hands and bravely defended Akira from any attack. By watching Kane be so brave, Akira was able to muster up the courage to unlock his own power and freeze the enemies and come out victorious. Cabane was on his way the next day, when he ran into in the park, broken and crying. She had been abandoned by Inari, and it seemed she had nowhere to go. To lift her spirits, Cabane challenged her to a fight and they exchanged blows. Suddenly, Khan lunged at Cabane and punched him again and again. Cabane then retaliated with extreme force, pushing her away. Khan wept, overwhelmed by her own weakness, but Cabane didn't judge her. Instead, he consoled her, and at that moment, a deep friendship was born between the two of them. Before leaving, Cabane promised Khan that he would return. Mihai ordered the trio to infiltrate the Bug Bite Electronic Company's plant, and investigate why their employee's auto-deletion rate had suddenly dropped to zero. Chiki went inside the building to investigate, while Cabane and Akira waited outside. He soon reported back with the startling news. The company manager, Rieka, was in fact a mosquito kimono in disguise, working with her sisters to suck the brains out of their employees, effectively leaving them unable to think and delete themselves. Cabane and Akira rush into the building when they realize Shiki's in danger, but their progress is quickly blocked by Momoka, one of the mosquito kimonos. Cabane defeats her without breaking a sweat. When they arrive, they find out that Shiki has already taken down the remaining mosquito kimono. Just then, elder sister Rieka appears and attempts to negotiate, but Cabane refuses to back down. Rieka, furious, sucks the brains out of both her sisters and transforms into a hideous, scary mosquito. Cabane tries to punch her, but she holds his wrist tightly and stabs him. Desperate to protect Cabane, Shiki rushes forward, only to be roughly thrown away and injured. Desperate, Cabane does whatever he can to break Rieka's grip, even if it means harming himself. That's when Cabane hears Mihai's voice instructing him to use his inner kimono strength. He then ruthlessly rips Rieka's hand apart, inflicting a devastating injury on her. But his job was only to investigate. But their sudden respite was short-lived, as a kimono Nabumaru, working under Inari, appeared and burned the mosquito kimonos to ashes to hide the event from the humans. Before he departs, Nabumaru secretly confides in Kanabe that Inari is still after his life stone. The next morning, Cabane remembered his promise to Khan and now he was finally ready to meet her. The four of them ventured to Shiki's hometown to learn of his parents' whereabouts from his uncle Akio Maru. After a private conversation, Shiki shared the sorrowful news, his parents were gone. To find light in the mood, the four of them decided to go and watch fireflies in the nearby forest. Just as the beauty of the moment begins to sink in, Shiki starts to recall a distant memory and quickly rushes into the woods. Cabane and the others followed him, until they reached an old cabin where they found Shiki in a state of shock from his traumatic experience. Nabumaru inspected what appeared to be an artificial insemination catheter. Nabumaru concluded that it must be an experiment site, where they were attempting to produce the mythical golden spider web, which has the power to cure anything with its healing silk. Nabumaru further revealed that Inari was determined to keep the healing silk from being sold, and was in search of a man named Akio Tamaru who was responsible for its creation. It all started to make sense to Shiki, who now realized that his uncle must have used his own mother in the experiments to make the healing silk. Shiki turned to Cabin, asking for help to kill his uncle. With Inugami's help, they managed to get Akio, the man responsible for this, to confess his crimes. Upon hearing his confession, Shiki raged and attacked him with his web, squeezing the life out of him. Suddenly hundreds of creepy spider kimonos descended upon them. Akio revealed that each and every one of these kimonos are failed products of his experiment with Shiki's mother, they are Shiki's siblings. Upon hearing this news, Shiki was overwhelmed with pain misery and grief. In desperation, he begged Kanabe to help. Using his powerful kimono powers, Kanabe bravely jumps into action, unleashing his inner kimono, savagely crushing the heads of each approaching kimono with his bare hands. But his challenge was far from over, as a colossal spider kimono had arrived to wreak havoc. Without fear, Kanabe fearlessly attacked him, obliterating his eyes with a single punch. He continued to battle fiercely, destroying all the kimonos, even losing one of his hands in the fight only to later regenerate it. He grabs Akio and looks to Shiki for the final decision. Does he want Akio dead? Shiki chooses compassion, accepting that nothing he does will bring his mother back. The group was in for a surprise when suddenly a young girl named Aya arrived. With Inugami's help, she found the location of Shiki's mother who had been hidden away by Akio all this time. 
After rescuing Akio's mother, Kumi, it is revealed that Aya is Shiki's sister, and the golden spider web from Akio's experiment. During the next couple of missions, Akira keeps making clumsy mistakes and decides to run away. The group goes to investigate a mysterious ice castle that suddenly appeared. There, they find a suspicious young man named Yui, and he tries to harm the reporters. Luckily, Inugami intervenes in time and explains that Yui is under the influence of a null stone, a stone that can destroy and revive barren lands and that he could be Akira's brother. Realizing the danger, the group quickly retreats. But Yui's powers come into action and, instead of killing them all, he freezes the crew in a way that spares their lives. Kabe managed to break out of the ice and encountered Akira in the castle. He confided in Akira, discussing plans to defeat his brother. Surprisingly, Akira revealed that it was he who had requested his brother to freeze them. Taking a harsh tone, Akira confessed his hate towards Kabane and left with his brother. Kabane was left confused and saddened. Yui appeared, aiming to freeze Kabane again. But Akira intervened, taking his brother and leaving. Inari then appeared, asking Kabane to steal the Null Stone for answers about his parents. But Kabane refused, opting to save Akira instead. When Kabane arrives, he saves Nabamaru from Yui's icicles attack and interrupts their fight. With courage and determination, they then devise a plan to defeat Yui. Nabamaru ignites Kabane's body with flames to protect him from Yui's freezing power. This gives Kabane the advantage as he burns Yui's arms. However, Yui proves to be too strong for Kabane and uses his own shield of ice to repel him. Yui then persists in blocking Kabane's fiery barrage with his shield of ice, which ignites another round of heavy blows. At Kabane's request, Nabumaru increases the flame level, allowing Kabane to break through Yui's ice barriers and deliver decisive strikes. But then, just as he is about to land the final blow, Akira appears to stop him from continuing their fight. They all notice Yui's body slowly wasting away as Nullstone sucked away his energy. Kabane sacrificed his own life stone to cancel the effects of the Null Stone and save Yui's life. The next day, Akira apologizes to Kabane for his lies, of hating him, which he said to protect Kabane from fighting his brother. When Kabane visited Yui, he thanked him for his brave act and revealed that the Kimono Stone, like his own life stone, had been used by powerful kimono since ancient times to maintain harmony between the human and kimono worlds. This could only mean that one of his parents had been a prestigious kimono chief. With newfound answers, Kabane and his friends go on a journey to find his parents.